Good sleep is a foundation for good health and a happier frame of mind. But when was the last time you woke up feeling refreshed, alert and hopeful, rearing to take on the day? Or when was the last time you fell asleep easily without any effort? According to research, almost a third of us drag ourselves out of bed in the morning because we haven't gotten good enough quality sleep at night, meaning we're not feeling as great as we could be during the day. So today I'm going to run through some scientifically proven techniques to help you get a better night's sleep. G'day YouTube, Jazz here and welcome to another video. All right, so firstly, let's go through the, the different stages of the sleep cycle. So once we fall asleep, our bodies follow a sleep cycle, which is broken into four phases. So the first three phases are known as non-random eye movement sleep or non-REM sleep. And the fourth phase is known as random eye movement sleep, so REM sleep. So phase one of non-REM, this first phase marks the transition between uh, being awake and sleep and typically involves like a, a light sleep state. Phase one typically lasts for a couple of minutes. Then you have phase two of non-REM. The second non-REM uh, sleep phase is characterized by deeper sleep as your heart rate and respiratory rate progressively uh, slow down and your muscles become more relaxed. Your eye movements will also reduce and your body temperature will uh, continue to reduce as well. And within the brain, apart from some uh, infrequent high frequency uh, brain activity, your general brain waves will also start to slow down. And this phase, phase two, is typically the longest phase of your sleep cycle. Then we have phase three of the non-REM. So this phase is really important in making you feel refreshed and alert for the next morning. So your heart rate, your respiratory rate, and your brain wave activity all reach their lowest states and your muscles will be as relaxed as they will be during the entire cycle. And with this phase, it will generally be a bit longer towards the, you know, the early hours of you being asleep and then kind of progressively become shorter as you go through the night. Then you finally reach phase four, which is your REM sleep. As the name suggests, your eyes will move rapidly kind of back and forth under your eyelids during this phase. Your respiratory rate, your heart rate, and kind of your blood pressure will now start to kind of rise during this phase of sleeping. Your arms and legs will also kind of become paralyzed and typically your dreams will occur in this phase, in this REM phase of the sleep cycle. And now it's also believed that uh, this kind of muscle like paralysis that occurs during this phase of sleep is also to kind of help you from uh, acting out on the dreams that you might be having. The duration of each REM sleep cycle kind of increases throughout the night. There have also been numerous studies that actually link this phase, this REM phase of the sleep cycle to memory consolidation as well. And your ability to achieve a good uh, REM phase of your sleep cycle is actually a lot better when you're younger and the older you get, it kind of the ability to stay in that phase or uh, get that REM sleep actually reduces. So the majority of the time, once you you get older into adulthood and you know older, the amount of time of, or I guess the majority of your sleep it ends up actually being spent in the non-REM phases. So these four stages, the three of non-REM and the one of REM kind of cyclically occur throughout the night until you wake up the following morning. For most people, the duration of each cycle is typically around 90 to 120 minutes and non-REM sleep actually constitutes about 75 to 85 percent of each cycle. Now typically an adult should be ideally getting around seven to nine hours of sleep per night but if you're unable to get the kind of required Required seven to nine hours. Here are a few tips that might actually help you improve your sleep. Now, number one, set a sleep schedule. Now, this one can be a bit hard to maintain because, you know, you've got work, you're studying, you know, family, all these other things that, you know, always end up being quite a bit variable. And it can get in the way of trying to set up a, a consistent sleep schedule. But ideally throughout the week, you'd want to try and go to sleep and wake up at the same time, give or take about 20 minutes. And that includes also on the weekends. And kind of creating this a sleep framework sets the body's kind of internal clock to expect rest at a certain time in the day. Number two, create a relaxing pre-bed routine. Whether it's taking a hot shower or reading a book or listening to some you know nature sounds or meditating, any relaxing activity about an hour before you want to go to sleep helps create a, a nice transition from wakefulness to being asleep. Number three, keep your room cool and comfortable. The ideal room for sleeping is cool, quiet, and dark. Studies show that a bedroom temperature of around 18 degrees Celsius or 65 degrees Fahrenheit is usually the most conducive to 
healthy and restful sleep. Your mattress and pillows should also feel comfortable, allowing your body to settle down and rest. Number four, dim the lights after dark. Getting enough natural light during the day is important for kind of maintaining your circadian rhythm. Bright lights from lamps and you know lights from electronic screens can mess up that circadian rhythm, making it harder to fall asleep. That's because the light, especially blue light, which usually comes from all the screens and stuff we all use, interferes with the release of melatonin. Number five, screens and sleep are incompatible. Keeping screen use to a minimum, at least one hour before going to sleep, is essential to getting a good night's sleep. Besides the light disrupting your body clock, games, videos, you know, social media, emails, all that kind of stuff, all work to keep your mind active, and this, as a result, will keep you awake a lot longer than you should be. So because of something like that, I usually will put my phone on do not disturb after say, you know, 10.30 and usually kind of like flip it over just so that, you know, even if the screen lit up, I wouldn't notice it. Number six, no coffee late in the day. Now this is a bit of an obvious one, but try and avoid stimulant later in the day, like say in the evening and the nighttime. If you have trouble sleeping, you'd obviously want to evolve any food or drink product that contains caffeine, you know, which would include coffee, non-herbal teas, you know, uh, soft drinks like Coke and even chocolate. And ideally, you'd want to avoid those things within that six hour window before you go to sleep. Now, number seven would be to avoid foods that can disrupt your sleep. Now, citrus fruit, spicy foods, kind of fatty fried food, and you know, any other kind of heavy meal are all tough on the digestive system and can trigger indigestion. Considering it takes your stomach about three to four hours to empty, and if you're prone to heartburn, eating close to bedtime could potentially mean quite a bit of discomfort for you. Number eight would be to consider reducing your alcohol intake. Now, even a single glass of wine has the ability to impact your the quality of your sleep. Now, alcohol alters what's known as sleep architecture, which is the natural flow of sleep through the different phases of the cycle. So, you know, deep sleep, light sleep, REM sleep. And drinking also causes, you know, more light and kind of restless sleep while diminishing sleep depth and the overall quality. So you're more likely to wake up feeling pretty fatigued. Number nine, try and exercise regularly. Now, a 2013 study found that a regular exercise regimen helped with overall sleep quality improvement. Ideally, you want to work out at least three hours before you go to sleep as exercise stimulates your body to produce cortisol, which keeps your brain alert and obviously that is not ideal for sleeping. And number 10, last point, train your mind to see your bed as purely a place for rest, you know, so avoid kind of sitting in bed, you know, watching TV in bed and, you know, or just sitting in bed and browsing the internet or whatever. And there's also been some research which kind of recommends that if you're kind of struggling to go to sleep in bed uh, for about, say, about 20 minutes and you can't get to bed, then ideally you should get out of bed and try and do some sort of activity that might help relax your mind, you know, kind of calm you down to get you into that pre-sleeping kind of state. And things like that could, you know, just be sitting on the couch listening to some, you know, relaxing music or reading a book. Uh, or something like that. The goal of that technique is kind of known as stimulus control and to try and break up the association of your bed as kind of a place of frustration and worry when say, you know, you're carrying sheep and you know, you still can't get back to bed. So guys, if you are struggling to get a, you know, a good night's sleep or a good good quality like deep sleep, then do consider giving some of these uh, techniques a go. I hope you found the video useful. Um, if you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.